Hi, this is Tom Bassett-Dilley, and I'd like to tell you the story of Acorn Glade, a Fiat Source Zero certified passive house. There's so much we could say about passive house, conservation techniques, healthy interiors, biophilic design, all electric homes, and more. But in this 10 minutes, I mostly want to tell the architect's story, the story about design as a way to bring people in harmony with the environment. First, a very brief intro. TBDA is an architecture firm I founded in 2006 to pursue sustainability. Since then, I became a certified passive house consultant, trained and hired a few more, and designed the first handful of certified passive houses in the Chicago area, with many more since then and in the works. We're an Architecture 2030 signatory firm fully committed to the clean energy movement. We're also big fans of the Greenbelt Home Tour and have been on it from the start. Hopefully you've had a chance to see some of these projects in person in the past and will soon in the future. In fact, this house was on the tour in 2017, but wasn't fully finished or fully certified, and it didn't have the solar PV. In design, we strive for health, beauty, and efficiency, which means integrating space, structure, materials, light, and technology. It's complex, and as you layer on new technologies and priorities like low toxicity, low embodied energy, and zero operational energy, the design process has to adapt. A powerful tool in this new approach is the Passive House Energy Model. Running it in parallel with our visual design, we can continuously evaluate detailed energy and HVAC load data. It means we can tune the building to its location and fully optimize its efficiency through R values, shading, orientation, and the like. These images are from the modeling program called Woofy Passive, along with a solar pathfinder shot that gave us exact shading data for our location. Well, there's no great project without great owners, and Jen and Tom Smith are definitely that. They inspired us with their desire to be low energy ambassadors in a modestly sized, lovingly detailed house. It was so rewarding to develop a shared vision, because after all, the most important audience here are those that live in it. Here's how we did it. It all started with the site, of course. They found a quiet, woodsy lot near their son's school, and right away we visited to get the feel of it, to sense the light and the plant life, the views in different seasons. And we also studied the zoning and septic requirements. We had to contend with a limited septic field location that meant the seven walnut trees had to be removed, but they were salvaged. You'll see that later. We tested design possibilities by exploring some site plan alternates, and in review with the owners, we discussed solar access, outdoor spaces, privacy, views. And we landed on this one because it had the best balance of capturing light and views, and it made a nice compact shape, which is good for both economics and energy. And it had good opportunities to commune with the oak trees in the backyard and to the south through outdoor living spaces. This early interior sketch shows how we were thinking of the indoor-outdoor relationship, and this rendering later on in design shows it more developed you can see here the biophilic theme, which is integrating quality of the woodwork, unifying the interior, and creating this kind of woodsy experience, this kind of serene environment. The exterior concept started with a quest for durability. When we turned to nature, we took inspiration from exoskeletons. This is a potato beetle. And we conceived of the metal cladding that way, impervious to water and most UV. Inspired by the acorn, we peeled that exoskeleton back to reveal a softer, more inviting material at touch points. This is pre-finished wood cladding that we painted in colors of dormant prairie grass, the background color of the native landscape. I think of design as a spiral connecting concept to details, and every joint, every piece of hardware needs to be studied, documented, and approved by client, concept, and performance requirements. We zoom in, we zoom out, we spiral. And here are the floor plans. North is up here, so you can see the main hall where the stair is, opens to the sunlight and the front porch. The house is only about 1,800 square feet with no basement, so the flex spaces in the northwest corner of each floor are important for overflow functions like storage and flexible use as, fam as the family ages. On to construction. Every site walk is like Christmas Day to me. Here's the foundation going in, lots of foam to keep the foundation and the slab warm. The framing is pretty conventional, but it's covered with a fluid applied air barrier. That's the pink stuff that helps make this an extremely airtight building. As with all high performance buildings, you make it airtight and you install a great ventilation system to get the pollutants out and fresh air to sleeping and living areas with excellent filtration. Here are samples being reviewed by the owner, the siding samples, which you can see were approved. 
And here are some key components to an all-electric house. The mini-split heating and cooling system is super efficient and quiet. The heat pump water heater is the way to go with electricity. And there are some different kinds on the market, not just these. In fact, this GeoSpring isn't on the market anymore, I don't think. And the ventilation system that I described before. This is the gold standard, in my opinion, the Serve from Build Equinox, a conditioning energy recovery ventilator. Check their resources out online. They got some great uh, learning resources. So once you've designed a building to conserve energy, you add renewables. We find that passive houses are efficient enough to get to zero energy using their rooftops if they're not shaded too much. A conventional all-electric house would need at least three rooftops. So conservation is key. And that's what allowed this house to make the Source Zero certification and win these awards. Let's take a walk through. So here we are coming up the driveway. Some new trees planted. And yes, that is a Tesla in the driveway. One great thing about having that solar array on top is you can choose when to charge your electric car. Here we are coming in the front door. It's kind of tucked behind these privacy walls for the deck. Uh, the doors and windows are by Zola, triple glazed, European made by a Colorado company, Zola. Yes, I am wearing a mask. This is taken during coronavirus. <laughs> there are the Zola windows. This is the big south opening, and that is the walnut feature wall to the right. That's what happened, I'm sorry, to the left. That's what happened to those walnut trees. We have a slab on grade floor there that we we just basically ground and polished with a put a polyurethane coating on it. We're kind of seeing through the house, walking back towards the east. This is the living space, kind of all one big space here. Kitchen to the right, we're going to turn from the dining room towards the living room. And then that flex space is off to the left. We're not really walking into there right now. But the idea was that these back rooms would have very targeted views towards the oak tree and bringing the light in from the south and then kind of southwest through that stair zone to the oak tree there. And the woodwork theme you can see here kind of reaching across the the ceiling is it's all light maple and it just ties everything together. There's that oak in the back and we're going to head over towards the kitchen very simple, relatively small kitchen. Put the window up high because that wasn't really a view area, but it was a good place to get in light and some free heat in the winter. That's the screen porch out the back. And there is the walnut feature wall that we made a lot of. Those slot windows in it bring light in, borrowed light, into the bathrooms, which stack over each other to the right of the stair here. At the top of the stair, you'll see the mini split heat pump, which is up to our left, there it is. That does the heating and cooling. There's one unit downstairs as well. The two of them kind of manage on separate thermostats to kind of keep everything even. This floor is salvaged maple from a terracotta factory that was being taken apart. Uh, we got that through the reuse depot in Maywood. Here's that bathroom with the borrowed light. We also turned the lights on for the video, but um, it's nice because you could be inside in the middle of the space and have light coming through these frosted glass windows. Porcelain tile mostly, relatively inexpensive, durable, fitting with our theme of kind of the gray bark against the light colored woodwork. And then we're gonna head east here towards the bedroom wings. So the bedrooms are all against the east, stacked over the kitchen, dining, living. And we're gonna head down now, we're heading north this is the little laundry alcove. In a small house, we're making use of every square foot here, which we do in large houses too. <laughs> but uh, this is a condensing dryer, so there's no gas. It's electric uh, condensing dryer, and it just condenses the water out, so there's no hole through the side of the house. So here's that flex room, which right now has to do with Legos and sewing. Um, but you know, if you need to put a guest up, or if you need to do a different project, like I said, it's the uh, instead of a basement kind of thing. Now heading into the southeast bedroom, we've, uh, we've got a little home gym bedroom. Um, and in the back is this um, sleeping porch, which is over the screen porch down below. He's strung up some hammocks here. It's like, I think the greatest thing to sleep outside as long as you're not being eaten by mosquitoes. 
And um, and that's the tour. We're outside of the house looking back. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next year on the Greenbelt Home Tour.